So, so the, just the, the whole leaders thing. that yeah. have made it that are willing to pour in to those that have are on their journey or that maybe have not quite made it yet. It, that's the kind of people that I'm interested in. Hey guys, welcome back to our podcast, People Bring Profit. My name is Chris Alexa. I'm the CEO founder of this awesome company, and I got my people here with me today. Yeah, Kimberly Alexa, founder of Aspire to Be Hospitality Group, um, service CFO of this wonderful company. Whoa! Justin Smith, operations, happy to be here. Happy to be here. You're always happy to be here, and I'm always I excited. Am. Say am. thank <laughs> you. Excited. Um, uh, but hey, uh, first off, I want to start this out. Thank you so much for all the subscribers. We just had a cool little event. We gave away three wings for three uh, three wings for a year mm -hmm. for three yeah, lucky that subscribers. So cool. That was pretty cool. They were pumped up. Um, it was shared for that. We picked it, and we're going to be throwing some other crazy stuff at you, too, because we, we like to have fun because it gets kind of boring in this office sometimes, so our minds go crazy. Um, but, hey, we do want to remind you, go hit the subscribe button, right? I need subscribers in all of our platforms, podcast, uh, go look at po uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and especially YouTube. I am driven yeah. on YouTube. Love YouTube. Yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a visual person, mm -hmm. so I like Me watching. Too. I don't like li just listen. I like seeing people. You know, mm -hmm. um, so go watch that, please. But hey, today's podcast today is is yesterday. Last week was me, and now it's Kimberly. Yes. Boom. Yeah, and she is yeah. not happy about this one. Man, to be honest, I just hate Q and A's, but um, I'm here for it. You are. Yeah. And then uh, in the next show, we'll have Justin up here as the CEO and just kind of dig a little deeper. We talked about this, right? Then in our podcast. Uh, when we first started season one, we kind of went in a deep dive. We got to know, like, Kim and the, you know, the Burger King days, growing up days a little bit. Yeah. Today, I just want to kind of, you know, get a little deeper into the, the Kimberly CFO mindset, you know? I'm going to try to give you the best I got. I know, you, but your your best is always great. So Yeah, I, well, my, my, we'll see. Well, I get we'll to, see I, what you come at me with. I get some, uh, it's my turn to pass it on to you. So I'm going to start my questions, and I wrote mine down here, so bear with me, okay? <laughs> What leadership qualities do you think is essential, must be essential, to be successful in the franchise business as today? Okay, we're jumping right on in. Let's go for it. So uh, the leadership qualities that I think is essential, I guess, would be for me, from what I've learned, is you have to be a good listener. Um, it's essential. It is. Because you just can't, especially in our business, and, and the, the way I'm surrounded by different leaders is that I have to be able to hush, listen, and then process. And, and listening and process are the most two important aspects, I think, that I bring to the table and I encourage others to bring to the table as well. Um, so, yeah. You know, pretty short answer, but that's it. You know, I just go in for the <laughs> for the kill. I can piggyback off that one. Yeah, I ahead. can totally piggyback off that one. So, like, there's a difference between leadership and management, mm -hmm. right? Who are yeah. some of the best leaders that you've ever been around, and what's the difference between those two things for you when you look at our managers and our leaders in the company? Yeah, so for me, leadership is really being able to drive the bus and coming up with the strategies at the very high level. Um, becoming up with systems, visions, and, and just really how you want your business to succeed and what your ideas of success looks like. And then for management, it's really the grind of the business. You get in there and you actually manage the systems that the leaders put in place. And so um, there is a significant uh, there is a significant difference between a leader and a manager. And again, I just correlate the two. Leaders are visionaries, and they s they sit on top, and managers are the ones that are grinding on the everyday. And um, who's, who's a good leader? Yeah, who's yeah. a good leader you look up to? So, um, you know, to be honest and just to be raw and real, I didn't really have any, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. So looking, you know, with my background and where I come from, I really didn't have anybody to rub elbows with and to help me along in my in my journey. But if I'm just going to look back over my life, I would say I've had some significant pastors in my life mm -hmm. that have led me down my career path as far as encouragement. And then I love to just sit and when I go on business conventions, our, um, we got an opportunity one time to go. We had a, uh, 
a business owner in New Orleans that we got a opportunity to go and just sit at his table and listen to what he's done in his life and how he, uh, I mean, he was a, what, billionaire? Yeah. <laughs> uh, multi. Yeah, multiple Gulf streams. Yeah, I mean, this <laughs> this dude was yeah. uh, awesome. You know, I told Chris l- after leaving that meeting, I'm like, I, I felt like Moses in Pharaoh's castle, Yeah, honestly, because wow. I looked up to that dude that he was even given us the opportunity to sit at his table for number one, but just to be able to see how he rules his business and how he governs his business at a very um, economical advantage over what we had. And yeah. he was able to sit at the table with us and he was interested in what we do. Yeah. It, so it blew my yet. mind. Yeah. It, yeah, it blew my mind. Wow. Um, I mean, he put us up in a penthouse for the night. Yeah. And, and we That's ate stra- cool. <laughs> chocolate dipped strawberries. <laughs> it's actually, we got to our room. There was a oh, chocolate so dipped <laughs> strawberry in our yeah. room. That would stick and too. So yeah. 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 So, so the, just the, the whole leaders thing. Yeah. that have made it that are willing to pour into those that have are on their journey or that maybe have not quite made it yet, it, that's the kind of people that I'm interested in. That's a great point. That is. And, and it's cool you say that listening. You've taught me that. You know, and I think also good, you know, we talk about leadership and, and me and you talk about it all the time. We're at home. You always coach me up and I try to coach you up. Yeah. And, and there's times that I've learned through you, there's just times to listen. Yeah. Just listen. Yeah. I mean, you know, when, when somebody comes to you, they always don't want you to give them the answer. They mm-hmm. just want you to listen to. You. And I've learned that through you because I used to try to fix everything. Yeah. But now that's now that's it's like with you, it, 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 it's changed. So that's what's cool about the leadership with you. So, um, Kim, that, those are short. Those aren't short answers. Those are awesome, honest answers and really cool. And I forgot about that trip. That was a pretty awesome experience for us and, yeah. and, and a humbling experience, I think, because now I look back at that and look how, how how successful he was. Very. And how he treated the people underneath him. Yeah. With tons of respect mm-hmm. and looked up to them and wanted to know about them like he did us. And yeah. I think that's what helped us get there. So cool, yeah. man. Awesome. Kim, in this world today, me and you've experienced um, multiple different franchises, yeah. different concepts, different businesses. And we're part of, I don't know, six now. And we've had some in the past, some that's failed. Yeah. You know, I got this question. In your experience, what are some of the key factors for a franchise success? So this is the most important key factor to me. When you buy into a franchise, you buy into a system, a a playbook, and you gotta be able to follow the playbook. Yeah. You can't come into a franchise system for number one and have your own ideation idea ideas, excuse me. Um, of how you're going to run this business. I was going to try to correct that word, but I did not say it again. Yeah. <laughs> I get, I get awesome. tongue-tied. I know you do. Awesome. I'm like, oh, okay. I get that. Yeah, I get tongue-tied, darn it. Um, anyway, because uh, my brain is processing faster than my mouth can talk. It's an issue. Um, <laughs> so we're running the systems. <laughs> yeah, my, my brain is running the yeah, system, system, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So anyway, now I forgot where we were. What, oh, what's oh okay, yeah. Being able to run the playbook, right. So I see the... Uh, in our area, just looking at our area and, and people that get into this franchise business, man, they think that they've bought a system and, and then they just think the system's going to run itself. Or they want to change it. Or they want to change it, mm-hmm. of course, yeah. But the system doesn't run itself. Mm-hmm. And you have to set up your own processes and everything to, s- to be able to succeed at this business. But the franchise business is a, the best way to go if you don't know anything about business. Yeah. And because they do have the playbooks and everything that comes along with um, owning your own business. Now, they don't tell you how to run the back of your business, <laughs> which is your financing They'll and your accounting. Legally, we can't help you with that. Yeah, legally or we can't HR help. issues. They yeah, they or the they HR issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. have to pour, you know, you have to self-develop on those, those issues. But um, you have to be able to f- follow the playbook. And you can't come into a franchise business thinking, um, I bought into Buffalo Wild Wings, but yet I'm going to turn that into Kim's Wings. Yeah, we say that all the time. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's neat. So did I answer your question? Yeah, you did 100%. And I think it's, well, you you, you know, you got to follow the system. Yeah. And, and, and my, our boy on our last podcast, like, we're not entrepreneurs. When you're a franchisee, you're not an entrepreneur, right? My boy Gary V called us out on that. So sometimes these people, I feel like too, also too, Kim, that they come in and they want to be an entrepreneur. They bought in a franchise and they want to do it their way. Yeah. And, and we get frustrated with some, you know, franchisees that we've been around that are part of our system because they try to do it their way and it, it, it kind of screws the system up. 
Yeah, and not to argue with Gary B at all, but I feel like um, as far as buying a franchise, yep. I, I, I am an entrepreneur because it, it only comes with the front end of things, That's right? That's right. Um, so on the back part of things, I did have to entrepreneurial our accounting, our HR, and all the back of the house systems. That was very entrepreneurial. I yep. had to think outside the box and come up with our own business because it's like a business within a business. That's right. And so, um, I mean, no, I will call myself an entrepreneur, especially in the department that you, I lead up. You, you, as hard as work you've done, you can call yourself anything you want to. Yeah, that's you right. Know? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> but I love my man Gary V. But uh, yep. yeah, I, I'll just say that I, I yeah. own a business within a business, that's and right. so the, yeah, the forefront is a franchise business, and he's absolutely right on that. I did not entrepreneur that well, end, but I have entrepreneur the back end. I, I, I want to jump on that what you just said too, because. Um, when you buy a franchise, I looked at it this way. I told somebody this the other day, and it just came out of my head that, like, when you buy a franchise, it's like buying a car. Yeah. Like, like you bought a beautiful car, but there's no engine in it. Yeah. Because it ain't going to go. It's pretty. It's got the tires. It's got the paint. It looks good. But you better make it go. And you got to put an engine in it. You got to maintenance. You got to drive it. You got to put gas in it. You got to maintenance the tires in it. So yeah. And before uh, Elon Musk uh, created the, <laughs> the Tesla, Oh, you had to have a driver too, but nowadays, yeah, yeah, nowadays. you co-pilot with the um, AI. Yeah, that's right. Woo, that's kind of fun. I, I don't know if I, and uh, that's a whole other topic. I yeah, think yeah. about <laughs> it like, can I do it? Can I take my hands off and play a video game while we're going somewhere? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. I've got a curveball for you. So it's okay. an it's an election year, right? Yeah. So there's just some as a leader, as just someone in business who a business owner. What are what is the most important thing going into this election that's important to you? Listen, the most important thing is the economy and the inflation and, and the cost of wages and the interest rates, because, you know, we're strapped mm -hmm. right now as the business owners uh, with these inf uh, these um, interest rates that are out there are really hindering our growth. Nine percent is ridiculous. Um, Inflation with the economy, the, the cost of the products, the shipping, you know, now we're having gas charges and all the charges that come along with that. The inflation of wages. Dude, yeah, you know, minimum wage is exactly what it means. It's minimum. So you, you start, they want to increase our minimum federal wages, but when you start at the minimum, you only have to go up from there, right? And so you're not paying, you're paying more than minimum. We don't you're have competing. many people on minimum. Yeah. No. And so what yeah. does that do? That dr that drives the consumer's product um, price increases. You have to. It's a it's an ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't be lopsided uh, because you lose in your business and nobody's in business to uh, <laughs> to go bankrupt. Yeah. Right. We're in business to win. So those are some important things. And I was looking at President uh, Biden the other day because I just wanted to see, like, in the last 20 years, where does he compare to? I think he's the third and over the last 20 years with the greatest inflation rate. Mm -hmm. he's, he compares, I think it was Nixon that he compared to. Yeah. And so just looking at the last 20, his binomics that he prides himself off, it's failing miserably. And I, I don't know if you're for the elephant or the jackass, but the jackass has ran our <laughs> our government, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our economy in the ground. $500 so. buggies at Walmart, 9% interest rates. Yes. I mean, and that's just from, from a business owner's perspective. I mean, you said one thing, but, man, that was that was a bunch of things wrapped up into one economy issue. Yes, it, it's it, all wow. about it. and it, it, It's terrible. It's awful. Yeah. It's, we, you know, I much rather sit in this office and bang our heads and try to make, you know, you know, drive sales, bigger, you know, better benefits for our employees, different things. But, man, I'm just trying to keep our head above the water. And, and I can't – we can't keep increasing pricing. Yeah. So people stop complaining and saying, well, every time I go to the grocery store, I hear this expensive. And then understand where that really comes from. Dig yeah. a little deeper in that. And I, I want – you know, I'm going to drift off my question here real quick. Oh, goodness. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, what's Justin call these yeah, curve balls? Curve ball. Yeah. Look. You asked me this question. And you, since you got on political parts of it, you asked okay. me this question about the American dream. Because me and you had American dream. Yeah. We grew up that. We saw the vision. We saw that hard work pays off. We saw that there's opportunity out there. We saw that there's books. Now there's internet that you can go read about a franchise. You know, if you want to own your own business, go start. Go be part of the one percenters, mm -hmm. right? And try it. And then you asked me that. Do you feel like the American dream's gone, right? Mm -hmm. Then our kids come home the other day. Yeah. And they 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 watch the podcast. Mm -hmm. Cuz they love it. 
you know, they're understanding. They're in college now. They're growing up, you know, and they understand that it, the part of the business. And they've been around our dinner table since they were can, can, yeah. can walk. Yeah. And hearing yeah. us talk business. Yeah. But you, they said, man, that was a great question. And you asked them. You turned the tables on Brendan and, and Keith on that. Yeah, because I wanted to know. I wanted to know what my kids thought about the American dream. A third generation. Yeah. What did they tell you? It blew us away. Yeah. Well, basically, they they said, you know, our generation looked forward to owning a house yeah. and owning a nice car. And uh, their generation really doesn't. Yeah. They're, they're, That's so they're true. only That's crazy. thinking yeah. about today. They said it day to day they live. Yeah. I thought every day about owning a house, and yeah. I, I never thought I would, but they I thought about it ev- all the time. White picket fence home, that was the yeah. American dream. You know, yeah. that's where you wanted to be. You wanted to be above the, the classes, not them. Man, they just, they don't know about tomorrow. And I'm like, what? You don't know about tomorrow? Tomorrow's mu- what you make it. And they're like, Mom, you are you live in the 80s. They think I live in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> like, no, dude. You so have go to go get it. It's there for the taking. You have to go get it. Quit allowing this society that we live in today to dictate your future. Yeah. Y- what you're seeing on the news is not the American dream. Well, Interesting. You know, he said that, too. He said that he felt like Brendan was going to graduate with his engineering degree here in yeah. December. Go get him, gig him. But he said that they feel like the American dream or the house is out of their – they can't reach it. Yeah, they can't own their nah. house because nah. he does what he's he sees what his budget is, what an engineering student coming out of school gets. He sees the interest rates and the cost of real estate, how it's gone up. And he, yeah, he's not married, so he's not going to live off a of dual income yet, you mm-hmm. know. And he's he's stressed. He said, I, "I'm going to have to rent an apartment because I'm like, man." And then Keith, same way. It's like it ain't like it used to be. You know, we just our our generation wants to work 35 hours a week. And make an income and, and, you know, go out on weekends and maybe hunt and fish here a little bit there. Where we came from, and see, I think society, Kim, is, is it's it's taking the, like, don't be wealthy. If you're wealthy, you're, you're bad. Yeah. I mean, that's where we wanted to be wealthy. We wanted not to have to live paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. We wanted a nice house. We wanted a boat. We yeah. wanted all the nice vacations because now we can give back more. So it was, I want to, you know, you, you had that conversation with the kid, and it's, and it's damn sad. It's it there for the taking, right? Okay. You, it's there for the taking. Go ahead. With okay, let me get you a question here. Get off yeah. that. Okay. Oh. Can you talk about some significant challenges or failures that you faced in your career and what you've learned from it? Oh, gosh. Especially as a woman. I want to know that because, you know, you're a powerful woman and you've taught yourself. And I want to know if there's any challenges that you've seen in there. Well, so being a woman and being in our industry, I mean, one of the f- – faces that I, I mean, the challenge that I face is um, basically I, I want to do it all because women want to do it all. Yes, you do. You know, we, <laughs> <laughs> we want to do it all. But let me get back to your question because, you know, I'll say being a woman, yeah, it defines who I am for sure. And, and, and it, it has a lot to do with my success and how I'm driven and, and all that. But more importantly than that, I feel like, Chris, one of my true failures that if I could help anybody out there in business is that when I got into this business I started working in it you know I I jumped in feet first I was the all mm-hmm. end all be all right I didn't take the time because I was so um, I was an adrenaline junkie and this is an adrenaline business um, you don't do the same thing every day you you get curveballs constantly thrown at your head and so you have to pivot to stay abreast but what I wish I would have done looking back I wish I would have created the system and then been a leader and not a manager Mm -hmm. because once you're both in your business you get so snowed under you can't get out yeah Mm -hmm. and so working in your business is different than working at your business and that's my failure yeah, 100% is my failure. Uh, it, it is. Yeah. 100%. You struggle with that. And I knew you would answer that question that way because it helps me manage you mm-hmm. as a husband and as your boss. Yeah. You know, because you struggle with that. And to the and, and w- to the young people out there is what she's meaning is, is, is let's back up on it and say she dove into this and now she's so deep into it 
and she w- our word is building machines. Yeah. We wish we'd have known that. You grind it, grind it, grind it, grind it. And you're grinding. still grinding. Yeah. And it's hard for you to build machines because you're doing your day to day grind. You can't take time away because you're like, you come in the <laughs> house and you're like, I told Steven, our H- new HR guy, I'm going to spend once a month and sit down with him. But that was three months ago. Yeah, you last know. month. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, but it, yeah. It, it, I it mean, four weeks have gone by and I'm like, I still haven't sat down with my. <laughs> My uh, HR director. Yeah, so it's it's true. So when you, you know when you start out in this business, kind of have a plan. But see, me and you back then, we were just going. You know, well because we grew pretty fast, you know. And I, I'm not going to sit here and beat myself up on it over it. Um, I'm still strategizing on how to rise above the grind, the day to day grind. But when you're in this business for 20 plus years, you got so much upstairs and so many files to pull. It's just hard to. Um, pour into someone you know and then just when you pour into that person they're up and gone and you got to do it again i know start over so it's it's a it's a challenge but um yeah if i if i could do it again and i don't know it it may have not have turned out as well as it has if i wouldn't have had done what i've done i don't know but i'm sitting here to say if if i could just have a wishful unicorn that would be my unicorn yeah you know work at your business, not in your business. Good answer. Wow. Justin, you up? Yeah, I've, I, I've got a good one. So as a, you know, 70s or 80s baby, you were born somewhere in that range. There's just this 70s, whole, okay, baby. Okay, so yeah. that, that generation, <laughs> the, 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 the point here is AI and artificial intelligence and how we're using it. I struggled yeah. teaching my 82-year-old grandma how to get a, an email address, right? I mm-hmm. feel like... I'm 80s, you're 70s. We struggle with the idea of artificial intelligence, whether that's in the school system or just how we're going to use it in business. Um, but I think you're embracing it. How are how are you thinking about it? How are you embracing it? What's it helping you solve? Yeah. So let me just tell you this: if you don't embrace AI, and I'm 50 years old, um, if you don't embrace it, AI, you are going to get passed up. I would encourage you to get out there and learn everything you can. And it's speeding. The 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 learning depth of AI is speeding so fast. It's it's already tripled me from what I've – I mean, I can't keep up. I know that I cannot keep up. And I'm, it's really concerning for me that I'm not going to be able to keep up with mm-hmm. it. But I'm going to give it hell. I'm going to ride it until I can no longer ride yeah. it anymore. But um, it's important because, you know, what took me in business – 20 years ago when I would have to go read a book to learn, man, I can type it into AI and it can spit out bullet points and I can learn at lightning speed of what I need to do. And, and just like yesterday, we, we did a financial presentation. I'm like, the, all this data I'm having to sit down, it's taking me hours. Uh, a younger girl that works in our office, um, she's over accounting. She said, oh, I can make um, queries, Microsoft queries. I think that's what she called it. Yeah. Anyway, I went and typed that in the uh, um, AI. It brought me step by step on how I can do Microsoft queries and and import data. It would t- if that's a college my, course. Yeah, that's <laughs> a college <laughs> yeah, course. But I would have to take time, yeah, out, yeah. you know, six weeks out of my schedule and go sit in a college room fr- and learn yeah. from a professor where AI just spit it out to me. Mm-hmm. And so, what do I have to do now, man? I have to learn. How to do Microsoft queries. Yeah. Cool. And you will. You know? <laughs> and and I'm telling you, what you what it took me twenty years ago to learn how to be a business owner. Well well don't take these kids, man. You can do anything you want with AI. And are you scared of people say, Well, I'm scared of it. Well, yeah, it's just like the internet years ago, right? If you put evil things in the internet, you're gonna get evil things in return. Yeah. Fair I enough. mean it it's we live in a sinful world and AI is going to be dangerous it's hard too because it it, books that you read can still be right or wrong they're not the end all be all so like part of the thing for me is like this thing's spitting out is it right or wrong have you seen it be mostly right or wrong when you're so for what i put in it's mostly right because i'm not going to the i'm not asking ai for political or 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 matter of very gray areas it's very a matter of fact and and that thing has helped me tremendously in in my field but awesome. I will say this, it's it's even an art to learn how to word AI. Yeah, yeah, we had a cool convo on that, like yeah. how to word the question. Yeah, yeah you, you know? have to be creative on yeah. how you word. So for me, I put in, I am a expert s- 
chief financial officer and I need to present on this, what are your suggestions? And it'll print out whatever, or I'm an expert in real estate. I'm, I want to embrace a commercial lease. What are tenants? Um, what are benefits to the tenant? What are benefits to the, um, the uh, landlord? Landlord. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it'll spit out things to you. It's it's super cool. So I I look at AI as like a co-pilot. Yeah. You know, uh, me and it work together to embrace business and to make my business better. Wow. Well, you know, I, I you're you're right on. First off, you go back and think about scary, right? Is it scary? Well, hell, I was scared with Y two K. <laughs> you know, when Y two K happened. Yeah. Um, so very worried about that too. So um that was scary to see that happen. But uh, on the AI thing, I thought it was pretty interesting too to see that um that like I use it as a proof checker, right? Like oh, if, yeah, I, if, awesome I, if I if I write something mm -hmm. in, 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 in the old days, you'd like, hey, can y'all proof this? You know, and yeah. you would proof it. So it proofs it for you. Yeah. So I, I look at that even when you're putting points in, it it'll correct stuff in it. So I, I think that's a good, good, good call, and you and, and we've embraced it. We use it. We all use it, you know. Yeah. And it's good, beneficial for us. Hey, uh, one of the questions I have for you is it my turn? I think it's my yeah. turn. Yeah. What is your proudest moment as a leader in the franchise industry from the first day to today? What's one of the proudest moments you're proud of? Well, looking at you know my background and my roots, I'm I'm very proud to be sitting in this chair right now, um, talking to the thousands of viewers that are out there. And just being able to pour into people, yeah. you know, looking back, just being able to say, I, this leader has bought a house. This leader's bought into a business. This leader, just I, the accolades for me is just for leveling people up. Yeah. And, and that's my biggest attribute. For me, I've always, I don't want to be in the spotlight. I'm not one to um, want to be in front of the camera all the time, but when, just for you, like when you got franchise, uh, when you were up founder, founder yeah. award, that was like a, a star in my hat too. Yeah. You know, it was you, you were honored, you were on stage, you got all the accolades for it, but I know the team behind you pushed yeah. you up there and that, and that's why you're there. And then when you got nominated for franchisee of the year, that was big for us. So for me, it's just leveling people up that are around me. That's where I get most of my, um, how I beat my chest per se, Yeah. you know, and how I take pride. Well, you know, what's what's cool about you is the company in, in, in general, like when we were for Franchise of the Year of the award up and um, we, we won awards, I've always asked you, like, hey, go on stage. You're like, no, I don't, that's not me. That's not my position. You, you don't, yeah. you don't, and you don't, you don't like that, you know? Yeah. One day you might have to take that spot, though, you know? Yeah. So um, I love that, your proudest moments. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, Justin, it's time for you a question. Yep, now. last question for me. Uh, so the most powerful companies in the world, S and P five hundred, only ten percent are female CFOs, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming those ten percent have superpowers, right? And mm -hmm. I, I love this question when we ask in an interview or talk to people about just what is your superpower as a CFO of a you know a large restaurant hospitality company? What is your superpower? Mm, well, I would think again, one of my superpowers is listening. Okay, and then observing and never allowing my team to embrace the impossible. Everything's possible. Um, and when I'm looking at numbers all day long and it gets really, you know, gloomy in that room sometimes because you we are up against challenges for sure. But it's just a challenge. It's just an obstacle. And, you know, I'm constantly pushing you guys. Okay, we're. I bring in my background. We're going to do intervention plans, or we're going to, you know, we're going to pivot and we're going to move this direction because we need to move the needle, and this is where we need to focus, and and all those things. But it's interesting that you said that women are ten percent. Twelve percent is the actual number of the S and P five hundred. So that's you know fifty five ish female CFOs of the most powerful companies. Wow, that blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, come on, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. Really, I no, thought that'd be higher. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I, I, I see even in executive suites, it's it is a man's world for sure. Um, I, I I noticed that, and um, I think that's where women play the best at is in a man's world. <laughs> True. Because <laughs> I'm just all you ladies be, listen. Yeah, you, you, I'm just gonna, gonna, gonna be increase real that twelve percent. <laughs> yeah, 
I, th I think women play well in, in a man's world. Um, but that, what, what was your question again the for me? The superpower. Oh, yeah. So that's my superpower. Listening, uh, observing, guidance, um, the nurturing that comes along with being a CFO of a company. Because, you know, sometimes it is doom and gloom. And you sit in a room and you are almost tugging and pulling with operations are the things that's driving your numbers that you're analyzing. And uh, you have to just be able to do that in a way that's, that's matter of fact, but also encouraging. Because you guys um, look at me sometimes and you're like, come to the defense quickly. And I'm like, wait a minute, we're not here to defend. We're here to analyze and process and see how we can make things better. It's not that we're saying that you guys are doing a bad job in operations or the ones that are responsible for the numbers. Y'all are not doing a bad job. We just need to do a little bit better job and let's focus on these areas. So I think for, for me, it would be the listening, the observing, and the, the ability to process and come up with the visions. Yeah, I think of words like just perspective and being steadfast, mm -hmm. and, and you've got those things. That yeah. those, I mean, thank you for sharing. Yeah. And I, I, I you know, being married to you and, and knowing your past, I see you call on that too, that you, you, you don't, you, you pay attention, high attention to the negatives. And you yeah. focus on them, but you don't let them drive you down yeah. in, in front of us. You know, yeah. like y I see you in the office and the doors close. You're like, oh, look at these numbers. You know, they could have be better. We could have made this more profit. But when you go in the team, it's like, hey, guys, we got to do better. And you, you, you motivate us. So I think that's one of your most powerful superpowers you have. You're able to call on your past and use that and drive from it. Because I see you do that every day in your life. You know, it's really cool. Not accepting no yeah. for an answer is a superpower. She, because she. when we're around Kim or I'm thinking about how we're going to go into a meeting or attack a project, I'm starting and leading with the no, can't do it, isn't even part of what this plan is going to be. So yeah. you've driven that mentality into others. And we know that that's not even something we can talk about. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. I saw somebody yeah. steal your thing the other day. No, it's not a... And a no is not the answer. It's just no. An it's not an option. It's just an obstacle. I saw yeah. somebody like heard you say that. And yeah. Say that on a podcast or something. I said, yeah. yeah I <laughs> got that heard that Kimberly. before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> somebody yeah. we know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Hey, uh, last question. I want to uh, uh, end it on this one. Transitioning from an RN because that's where you came from. Yeah. And managing your own first Quiznos franchise those mm -hmm. days back then it must have been a diff significant change for you from going up from an RN to running your Quiznos. Could you share the most challenging aspects of this transition in a moment that has been especially rewarding? Yeah, so um, coming from the nursing background, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for my degree, of course. You know, in nursing, uh, you learn how to take care of people. Me too, because you and take care of all of us. Yeah, <laughs> hospitality business, you're taking care of people. So it has similarities. And nursing, it, it's uh, heavy math driven. Um, and our business, you know, that's what drives our numbers is being able to compute numbers uh, and math. And so it has a lot of similarities. And how it just helped me is that when I went into nursing, I went into it because, again, it was just something I was familiar with because uh, my m of my mother. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make a difference. And I think that's what drives me in this business, too, is I want to make a difference. And whether it's into my leaders or whether it's into an hourly employee, if I can touch one person and make a difference, I've left a legend. And so that's really what drives me. And I think that's the core of me to be the RN. Mm -hmm. But uh, the um, leadership in me is to be a business owner and an entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of what that's yeah. kind of what drove me. And so, yeah, it's. There's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of superpowers that you have both as being an RN and, you know, changing lives, being impactful in people's lives. But it's the same in our business. When you first started out, what was a challenge, like right off? Like what was the biggest thing that you saw the difference of running that Quiznos and going to work and being an RN every day? Man, this all, uh, you know, as an RN, you grind. <laughs> My RNs out there are grinding. Um, in Quiznos, I was grinding. The difference, I don't know, Chris. I, d I really can't come up for 
can you think of something that you saw in me as a d- I, I, I did see I did see this as lead me down the path because when you were an RN and the, the 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 doctors you worked for everything had to be documented you know professional and then when you made me go and we'd go to Quiznos and sit there at night and look through the window to make sure your teams were doing it exactly right doing check don't wash dishes until this time <laughs> there was videos of Kim like take it and we had the cassette tapes yeah she would take them out and go play them. And then she would take a you know a, a snippet of that and show her employees that they did not wash the dishes perfect. Yeah. Do you remember those days? Oh yeah, I remember. But that's again, I was driven from my nursing background. You know, that was I can't say that that's different. Um, it's similar. Yeah. It, it was you know I learned how to be HR director from my nursing background. It's because you had to document. We call it a nursing profession. CYA, save your ass. Everything has to be written well, down. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. And, and I didn't know that. same in HR. Yeah. Save your ass. Everything has to be documented. And so um, it, it's just similarities. I mean, nursing yeah. helped me totally so much in the business world. It really did. And even though I'm not nursing today, um, it, it I can say my degree has really helped me. Yeah. And you still try to keep that degree up, too. I see that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was awesome. You know, I enjoyed this time together. You know, which what's cool about you, Kim, I, I get to live with you every day. And what you say right here is so true. You know, you are, a, a, I'm, I'm blessed to be by probably the most powerful woman that, you know, I've ever been around or got able to spend time with because you pour into so many other people. I see you come in there. I see you pour into Justin, myself, everybody in your team, even to our local managers, anytime you get an opportunity to. And your expectations are so high. You know, and, yeah. and, and which it's which and that's taught me to even hold my expectations high. So it's a it's an honor to be to marry to be married to you and to be business partners to you and uh, to, to sit around the conference table with you. Yeah, you know, well, thank you. I'm very I'm very blessed to be able to uh, be in my position to be able to hug those that come into my office. They all know, you know, you're going to get a hug from Kim. Um, I'm going to embrace you and, and appreciate you. And and that's just my thing. That's your thing. That's your thing. Well, um, thank you for this time. Yeah, thank, thank you guys you. for watching. And uh, again, I want to follow up again and, and 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 say this. I need to call of arms. I need everybody to go hit the subscribe button and follow this. Make comments. We're just a small business, right? Yeah. I uh, mean, it's free. It's free. It's the only thing in the world that's free. Yeah. Free, <laughs> and, free and subscriptions. We go say, get yourself one. <laughs> we say this all the time that, you know, we, we, we did something that I don't think a, a lot of people have done. You know, started where we came from and what we've done and the team that we built. And we con- constantly or sharpening our sword as much as we can and challenging ourselves in this world today, especially because it's getting it's getting harder and harder. The headwinds are unbelievable right now for us to run a business and yeah. to open it. And let me say, ladies, uh, there's some analytics that we can do behind the screens. I need to have more subscribers to my episode than these two guys. So get out there and oh, subscribe. Okay. <laughs> On my episode, we did free wings for America. We're doing free subscriptions for America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Justin's going to come up with something to beat you. Yeah. But uh, thank you again for your time. Thank you for tuning in, guys. And we appreciate you. And, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.